Hi, this is Renio Billups, and once again, welcome to my Ira Kitchen where as always big things are happening. Today, I'm going to be making for you some crawfish fritters and some savory cream corn. I got a request from Karen to make um, some conch fritters, but I couldn't find conch. So I said, well, the next best thing is crawfish. Um, so hopefully you like it. Well, I, believe, I know you like it. <laughs> um, but um, so basically what I have over here is all the ingredients and as I get close I'm going to break down to you what's what I have and what it's for <laughs> but I have milk crawfish water all the peppers and onions and parsley thyme the corn for the cream corn over here I have some flour Italian seasoning um, bacon soda seasoned salt black pepper cayenne pepper I have the exact same thing in this bowl and I have it broken down this way because this is going to be for the corn and this is going to be for the fritters so give me an opportunity to get some of this dry stuff that I told you about out of the way and then we'll work on cutting up the vegetables okay we're back when we make the declaration that I live on the corner a lot, it's summertime, so you might hear some music playing, some children outside playing, you might see a bike going by, and I have a seven pound poodle who doesn't like to be ignored. My daughter's not home, it's her baby, and you might even hear him whimper or bark. So, um, with that said, I'm home. So, um, let's start. We're going to go ahead and get all the vegetables cut and out the way that we're going to need. Um, it's going to be a nice, chunky, and hearty fritter as well as cream corn. Now, you don't have to make cream corn from scratch. <laughs> you can choose to use frozen, canned, whatever it is that you already have. But it just so happened that I went to the Eastern Market this morning and I was able to get some great, nice ears of corn that's non-GMO and it was at a reasonable price. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to use that. So that's what we're going to use. And I'm going to start with that. Um, I have a bunt pan here. I will not take the credit for that. I saw it. I'm not sure if I saw it on the Food Network, on the YouTube, or wherever it is I saw it. But someone was using the bunt pan to help to guide them to cut the corn. I thought it was ingenious. Because when you go to cut the corn off the husk, yeah, it gets everywhere. So, just in case you hadn't seen it, I'm going to share it with you. I leave the bottom on the corn like this so I can stick it down in there and basically all you do is you take your knife and you just guide your corn down and look <laughs> I'm excited it falls right in okay now we've got corn that's been cut from the cob I find that to be very neat <laughs> what see we got corn that's been cut from the cob. Okay, so next we're going to do the peppers. Um, I bought some green bell peppers today, but I chose to use what I had at home. I already had some orange and yellow and red peppers at home. They're kind of small, but once chopped up, who can tell? <laughs> so I'm going to go with those. I want you to use what's in your cupboard too. Don't go out and buy nothing fancy. Um, so let's start with the green pepper. I like to cut the top off, cut the bottom off, set that to the side, and then I just make a slit down it and kind of just go around in a circle. To me that's the easiest way to get the center out, the core out, and then you can toss that. Slice it up and basically I'm going to just cut it up real small. Cut them into real thin strips and then turn those strips around and just, just kind of go around it real small. Okay, so these little poquito peppers, <laughs> I'm just going to cut them in half, throw the seeds away. I'm not bold enough to try that other technique with these little peppers. <laughs> I'd be liable to lose a finger. Just cut these into strips. Now, of course, I'm going to be a little bit more careful with these ones because uh, they're smaller. And I don't want to lose a finger. So, 
push these to the side and then once again just gonna chop them okay last piece of red pepper chop it up chop it up chop it up chop it up <laughs> and done with the peppers okay so this side now you very well might not actually use all of these peppers but what's the worst that they can happen you have some extra diced peppers left over for tomorrow it's okay <laughs> I do have one more pepper the jalapeno pepper I forgot about that one it's in here somewhere okay totally optional you don't have to do it but we know that I like spice so just gonna Cut it in half like that, cut it in half again, and I'm going to take the knife and just kind of work the seeds out. See? What I'm going to do with these ones because so that I'm able to see it and pick it out, these are going to go into the cream corn, not in the, um, not in the crawfish fritters. So I'm going to leave these in strips because you know I already diced up the green peppers. So I want to be able to see these and take them out if I want to or if someone else don't want to eat it so I'm just going to leave these in strips because really what I'm trying to do is just get the flavor out of them and that's it that's it <laughs> okay I'm sticking with this all right then next thing that I'm going to chop up is the scallions and the onions um after that I have some tomatoes and some garlic some herbs and we'll get those and the celery and we'll do that real quick and get it out the way okay I'm just gonna cut the celery into some really kind of they have to be really really thin just cut them in some strips like that and then do the same thing just kind of rough chop them up So for the onion, we're just going to slice the onion in half and then take your knife and just kind of do thin slices going all the way up. Then do some slices going down, maybe about five across. And then we'll have finely diced onions. I'm just joking. I made a mistake. I really should have put those onions in the refrigerator and got them a little cold so that the oils wouldn't come out and burn my eyes, but I didn't. Had them sitting out and now <laughs> my eyes are running. So don't do what I did. Put your onions in the refrigerator and get them cold. <laughs> I just have some um, flat leaf parsley that I'm going to chop up. Um, I like I'm just going to say I love fresh herbs. I love spices and I put a lot of it in my food because I love it. It's up to you. You can tame it down. You can add more. You can add less. There's no really rule that says you have to do it 100% this way. But So I have some flat, flat leaf parsley here and all I'm going to do is I'm going to chop it up. There goes one of them summertime cars. <laughs> I, leave the, I use the stems and everything. Some people only want to use the leaves and that's fine if that's your preference too. But me, I like the stems and everything. Alright, 
grabbing a little bit of uh, fresh thyme and doing the same thing. That's rough chopping, rough chopping. Okay, last thing is the tomato. And I just cut the tomato in half. I know it's a lot of vegetable chopping, but like I said, it's up to you. You can choose to cut the vegetable from scratch or you can take shortcuts and buy them already chopped up or already diced. It's up to you. You know your schedule better than anyone else's and you know what you got to do. So you do whatever works for you. I left the tomatoes to last because of course they're going to make the biggest mess on the cutting board. And I wasn't going to switch cutting boards so <laughs> I left them to last. And I kind of did the same thing like I did with the um, bell peppers. I took them and just cut them in strips like that. Turn the strips around and then cut them in dices. But, hey, cut them whichever way floats your board. That's just what I do. I had someone to send me a message and she said to me, she said, you do it different from how I'm used to, but I'm going to try your way because no two pot don't cook alike. <laughs> and that's true. <laughs> so you cut your peppers and your onions and your tomatoes or whatever it is, whatever way you prefer to cut them. I'm going to put this in this bowl over here. We pretty much have everything cut up, so I'm going to straighten up, put the cutting board away, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now we're going to get into the flow of things here. Go back over this. Flour. Italian season. Chili powder. Bacon soda. Garlic pepper. Salt black pepper, allspice, and cayenne pepper. I'm just gonna mix those all together real good. And this is for the um, fritters. There goes them neighborhood children I told you about. <laughs> all right, so all, everything that we have chopped up, we're gonna put a little bit of it in here. Just wanna make sure that it's nice and chunky. So I'm gonna take some of these peppers, Probably about half of that. Put right in there. Half of the celery. Onion. Green bell pepper. I know you're saying this is a lot, but we don't want the fritters to be real cakey. We want to make sure we have a, a nice mouthful of crawfish to vegetable to fritter ratio <laughs> so the parsley tomato some thyme and last the scallion Put half of that in there. Okay. And I'm going to mix that up too. Make it nice and chunky already. Okay. So, very, very last thing that we're going to introduce to this is, of course, the crawfish. Um, I bought the crawfish like this. I actually went to a local grocery store and this is 100% um, crawfish flesh. Um, I'm sure you can get it at somewhere like maybe Walmart, Kmart. Well, I'm not sure about Kmart, but I know you can get it from Walmart. And um, I'm going to add the whole thing to it too. Mix it in. Yes, I'm going to add some moisture to it. It's already smelling really good too. So now 
I'm going to add water to it. I'm just going to add a little bit of water and I'm just going to keep adding just a little bit because I want it to be nice and chunky, but I don't want it to be real loose. So I'm just going to add... beautiful in the nice chunks of uh, crawfish and the bell peppers and everything this is gonna be so good get yourself a little New Orleans flair <laughs> okay Louisiana flair whichever way you want to put it okay I'm gonna add a little bit more water to that I'm going to give it a real good mix, but that's about as wet as I want it. I don't want it any wetter than that. You don't want it to be like pancake batter now. We're not making pancakes. We're making fritters. So, that's it. I'm going to set it aside. What I'm going to do is we're going to put the cream corn on to start cooking first. And while the cream corn is simmering, we're going to fry the fritters. So, this is all mixed up ready to go. I'm going to set this aside and then I'll show you how to get the cream corn working. It's real simple and then we're just going to cut the fire down on that once it's good and start frying our fritters. That simple. Alright, time for the cream corn. So, what I didn't show you earlier is I just have like, this is about three and a half tablespoons of butter. I'm going to drop it in my hot pan and let it melt. Okay, so we're going to let it melt, and once it's completely melted, we're going to add vegetables and everything to it and go from there. So the butter's melted, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add all of the onions. Celery. I'm going to just let that um, cook for a little while, while I am going to, um, in the meantime, also grater some garlic cloves over it. I have three garlic cloves. Just gonna use the grater real quick and just kind of run it over it. That's all. There he goes. That's the dog I'm telling you about. When his mommy is not home, which is my daughter, he sits at the window and growls at everyone because how dare you walk on his land. So now I'm going to add the bell peppers in. All of them. The color of them ones and all of the green ones. Give that a little stir. It's going to be a nice, hearty, and savory cream corn. A lot of times people prefer their cream corn kind of on the sweeter side. I've had a lot of com comments about people about why I use so much brown sugar. Well, surprise, there's not a drop of brown sugar in this dish <laughs> I'm gonna add those jalapenos to it they don't smell like they're gonna be very hot so I should be okay uh, you don't want to make them too spicy but like I said you can certainly leave them out or if you want to go to the other extreme Use some habanero pepper. <laughs> Up to you. <laughs> so the corn that I, I um, got off the cob earlier, I'm going to add all of that right in there. Alright. Set up. Oh, 
sure that smells so good. Let that do its thing for a few minutes and then I'm going to add in the tomatoes. Okay, so we're going to add the remaining ingredients, which is the tomatoes, the scallion or green onions, thyme, and the parsley. I'm going to give that a nice little stir. Once I'm finished, <laughs> there you go. It's smelling really, really, really good at the moment. And I do have the fire up high. I do. While it's like this, what I'm going to do is, in this bowl, like I mentioned before, um, this is everything that I used in the corn, uh, the fritters. So, it's the flour, all the spices, and I'll have that listed for you. And basically, I'm going to dump this all in there just like that no it's not gonna clump just dump it in Ooh. don't splash it like I did <laughs> and give it a nice mix and I let it just kind of steam for about maybe a minute just not even a minute, 30 seconds, just to get that raw flour taste off of it. And then, I'm going to bring over here my um, cup of milk. I'm using almond milk. Right now I'm going to cut the fire down. But I'm using almond milk. You are more than welcome to use whatever kind of milk you choose. Um, but we haven't had um, regular milk in this house in... Ooh, about five years so almond milk is what we use and so that's what I'm gonna add add a little bit of it stir it add the rest and stir it and then I'm going to add just a little bit of water to it. There we go. About another cup of water. And that's it. I'm going to cover it up. Let it simmer for a while. Check on it every now and then. If it gets to be a little bit too thick, um, in here is a cup of water and a cup of milk. If it gets to be a little bit too thick, Add a little bit more milk to stretch it out. But basically what I'm going to do is just cover it up and let it simmer. And that's it. So my oil is nice and hot. Got my fritters here. Um, for the mixture anyway and I took a, a pan um, and laid it with paper towel because of course when it comes out of the grease it's gonna be greasy <laughs> so we want it out of the oil anyway we want to make sure that we get as much of that oil off as possible um, I'm using an ice cream scoop you can use whatever size scoop you want to I'm going to just kind of maneuver it by hand. You can make them whatever size you want to. If you want to serve it as a dinner, you might want to make them a little bigger so, to you know, have some fritters with a salad or something like that. If you're trying to make them appetizer sizes, then you might want to use like a little teaspoon. Yeah, that's up to you. There's really no some big science behind it. So, basically, just going to go in and drop it into the oil like that. And what you pretty much is going to do is drop it in the oil. I'm going to flip it when it's good and when I feel that it's firm enough to flip. And then I'm going to use the spatula and kind of flatten it out. 
I'm gonna put four for maybe three. That way I don't make sure I don't make a mess. And when you go to flatten it out, it'll kind of take a little better shape to it. Okay. I'll fry it for about a minute on one side and that should be good. I got my fire on medium heat, but my oil is good and hot. I, I got it all nice and hot and then I cut the heat down. So just kind of maneuver it, you know. Keep at it, you know how your, your stove is. They're movable, but not ready to flip yet. So, let it do what it's supposed to do. Well, they're nice and firm on one side. They're not fully cooked, but they're firm. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna flip them so that I can kind of press them out like I said I was going to. Just kind of, there you go. Press down on it like that. Press down. Press down. Okay. Now we're frying them to cook them. <laughs> see how um nice and colorful they look? You can see the crawfish, you can see the bell peppers. That's what I'm talking about. You want it to be like that. Now of course it's not cooked yet, but you just keep it frying till it's nice and crispy and they're done. Those look really good, and I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I did pinch me a little one that me and my husband shared together. <laughs> um, they are really good, and these are ready to come out. It's the last of it. You're gonna get ready to plate it up. Let me show you the cream corn. Look how good that looks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> So let's pull these out and get ready to plate. Oh, it smells so good in here. <laughs> the cream corn and the crawfish and it just, mm, mm. I wish they would smell a vision. <laughs> um, either way, some people like to put like a gravy or something or another with their fritters. Some people just eat them like that. I like to do them with the cream corn. So it's kind of your choice as to what you want to do. Um, so I'm just going to show you how I'm going to plate it up. So I'm going to take two slices of tomatoes. Got to hate tomatoes. Put them here. Whichever way you prefer to put them. I'm going to put a little bit of cream corn on the bottom. Like that. Put a, let me get this one, nice crispy little corn. <laughs> Why do I keep calling it corn? It's a crawfish fritter with corn. <laughs> I'm going to put another fritter up here like that. And take a little bit more corn. I said it right this time. I'm going to drizzle a little bit on the top like that. Take a little bit of that fresh parsley that I got left over, put on the side. Parsley is good for you, so it shouldn't be just for garnish. Eat the parsley too. <laughs> put it in there. And there we go. Crawfish fritters with some tomato slices and cream corn. Simple. We did cut a lot of vegetables, but trust me, it's simple. And it'd be even more simple if you just get your vegetables chopped up already. So now for me to give it a taste. <laughs> okay, so I like to sprinkle a little S&P on my tomatoes, but it's up to you. You gotta put salt and pepper on it if you don't want to. But you've got to try this. I'm spit the fits to throw down and <laughs> get it out. Um, let's see what we're gonna dig in at. I'm just going to get me a nice scoop of everything here. Let that fall. Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good I kicked my stove. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I guess the thing is for you to not stay here and watch me eat it, but that you actually try it yourself. I appreciate you taking the time to view my video again. Once again, I appreciate each and every one of you who's taking the time to reach out to me, tell me to come back, check up on me, check up on me and my family. We're doing good. We're back. And guess what? You are going to tie out the semi face because they can't get me out of the race. I'm going to be here. Okay? Have a eye, everyone. <laughs>